You want to take good photos of your LED signs, right? Of course you do. Well, we're going to demystify some basic camera settings and provide useful tips to help dispel any fears you may have and show you how to get better photos of your LED sign. Cameras today have a lot going on. There's so many buttons and dials and menus that the manuals to explain everything often look like an encyclopedia. But we're gonna explain the three main camera functions that you'll need to adjust when taking photos of your LED signs. Shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. And then we're gonna give you a quick tip on how to make it easy to set up on most cameras. Shutter speed is a measurement of time for which a camera's shutter is open, allowing light that has passed through a lens in the aperture diaphragm to strike a photosensitive surface such as a film or digital sensor. If you don't care about the techie, how this stuff works stuff, just know that this is still the most important setting to get dialed in correctly because we need the shutter speed of the camera to play nice with the refresh rate of the sign's LEDs. Otherwise, we see nasty tiling patterns in our photos. Do you want nasty tiling patterns in your photos? No, you don't. For all you math lovers out there, shutter speed is most commonly displayed in fraction form and is spoken in the form of ith per second, such as 1 15th of a second or 1 100th of a second. Now, although we're talking about fractions here, most people only really pay attention to the bottom number. So just remember that a larger bottom number makes the camera take a quicker picture. Do they even need to remember that? Okay, the aperture is a hole in the lens that lets light into the camera. We can control how big the opening is and therefore how bright the image is. So a large aperture lets a lot of light in and a small aperture lets less light in. Aperture is conveniently measured in a completely obscure to the layman unit called f-stops. In this case, without getting too technical here, just understand that the lower the number, the brighter the image, because the aperture is open wider. And finally, there's ISO. ISO is the camera's sensitivity to light. A low ISO value makes for a darker image, and a high ISO number makes for a brighter image. The key here is to not go too high on the ISO, because a really high value can actually add visible noise and grain to the image, which we do not want. So to recap, the shutter speed is how quickly the camera takes a photo, and is the most important setting to dial in. Aperture is how much light is let into the camera, and ISO is the camera's overall sensitivity to light. You know this because the graphic says so. So how do we adjust all these settings, you ask? Hey, how do we adjust all these settings? We're looking for the magical shutter priority mode, and it'll be located on the main dial of the camera. Nikon and Sony cameras use S to depict this mode, whereas Canon and Pentax use TV for time value. This mode allows you to dial in just the shutter speed, and then the camera will automatically set the aperture and ISO for the best looking image. This is a great setting for anyone who isn't terribly interested or simply doesn't have the time to learn all the technical ins and outs of their camera. Now in the field, since all signs are a little different, we'll have to dial in the shutter speed through a bit of trial and error. But it's easy and only really hurts a little. <coughs> How exactly to adjust this setting depends on your specific camera, but there's usually a main wheel that controls the setting. 1 30th of a second is a great starting point for most LED signs. Go ahead and press the shutter button halfway down to see an approximation of the final image. If you still see tiling on the viewfinder, then we'll need to tweak the shutter speed a bit more. Try rotating the wheel backward to a 15th of a second, or forward to a 60th or 1 25th of a second, pressing the shutter button halfway down each time to see the result until the tiling disappears. To take the photo, go ahead and fully depress the shutter button. Get a bad shutter button! Nobody likes you! You got a big nose! Push the shutter button fully, and voila, picture. A long time listener, first time caller writes, this is great, now I can take photos of my LED signs. Do you have any other useful tips? That's a very convenient question. As a matter of fact, I do. Tip number one. If you're rolling around your hood, snapping quick pics to share with grandma or impress your neighbor's kids, then you can probably get away with a cell phone. But if you want high quality images that you can use in your marketing materials, then I highly recommend using a tripod to keep your pictures nice and stable. At the very least, prop yourself firmly against something for a wiggle-free shot. Tip number two. Try to avoid taking your photos in bright overhead sunlight. Early afternoon on a bright sunny day is usually the worst time to take pictures of an LED sign. If you must shoot during the day, try photographing the shadow side of the structure. This will usually make the LED sign look its best. Try to aim for morning or dusk because the lighting will make the entire structure look really nice. Just avoid aiming your camera directly into the sun if possible. That might not happen. Tip number three. Take your pictures from an angle rather than straight on and try to get the entire structure into the frame. This will show the cabinet depth and construction and will showcase your entire project. Tip number four. When it comes to LED signs, content is king. Try to always photograph the most colorful images that are playing on the sign. 
If the job site is important enough, consider asking the sign owner if you can temporarily put your own imagery on the sign while you're taking the photographs. Tip number five. When setting up your shot, try to find an angle that reduces background clutter. Things like cars, power lines, construction equipment, and other distracting elements often make for a bad photo. Tip number six. No matter what else you do, never, no, always, always review your pictures before leaving the job site. If you're able to dump the files to a computer and look at them on a bigger screen, even better. The last thing you want to do is get all the way back to the office only to find out your photos were blurry or not properly exposed. Trust me, when exposing things, it's worth taking the few extra minutes to get it right. So there you have it, a short, concise overview of taking quality photographs of your LED signs with no extra fluff whatsoever. It should be crystal clear now. And remember, nothing's impossible unless you can't do it. But you can, so it's not. Bigfoot!